What is up crew? It's your boy KSM and today we're going to be talking about the fundamentals of drawing the head. I'll be showing you guys how to draw the head and connect it to the neck. We'll talk about basic shapes, simple forms, the anatomy, and of course a few tips here and there that'll hopefully help you out if you are struggling with drawing the head. Now if it's your first time here, my name is KSM. I am a Filipino art streamer here on Twitch and I teach everything from anatomy, gesture, perspective, clothing design, and all of that stuff. And I also currently work full time in the animation industry for the studio that made Castlevania. So if you guys are interested in some free art education, you want to see my dog who's sleeping over there or he's awake right now, uh, but leave a follow, subscribe, all of that stuff. And I hope you guys enjoy today's video. Now, if you guys have never been here before, if you weren't here last year, I basically made three boot camps uh, for myself last year as a way to prepare myself to work in the animation industry um, as a character designer. But apparently a lot of you guys enjoyed it on Twitch. You guys were following along and stuff. And so I want to do the boot camp again this year. Um, we'll be, cho we'll be choosing some topics that are going to be similar, but we'll also be focusing on some other topics that maybe I didn't really address as much, uh, or I'll be kind of changing some things and giving you guys maybe more insight on on how I do things this year as opposed to last year. So um, if you, even if you did the boot camp last year, I think this will still be a great refresher for a lot of you guys, especially if you're looking to polish up your anatomy, you're looking to polish up your 3D form and understanding, you're looking to draw characters in perspective. All of these things are gonna be really valuable uh, and things that we're gonna cover on our stream today. But all right, if you guys want to, if you guys do want to follow along, by the way, all you got to do is go to the Discord channel, and I always have free art resources that you guys can download while I'm live. Um, with this one being the worksheet today, so we'll be going over the three heads here um, that we'll be using as reference to draw, and I'll talk about them as uh, we talk about the anatomy and stuff. And then here are two cheat uh, two cheat sheets that I made, which will be turned into a digital book later on in the year this is my first digital book that i'll be making um, but you can download this one for free to grab and also this one here they're going to cover things like uh proportions silhouette designs how to do foreshortening for overlaps um quick tips and tricks to make sure that you are not you know goofing up with your drawings and stuff but i highly gr uh, recommend grabbing these they are free again until the end of my stream Okay, but if you want to grab them off stream as well as all the other resources and stuff, do consider subscribing on Twitch. But otherwise, um, you can grab them right now if you're watching live. All right. But okay, so I think the first thing that I want to talk about with you guys today is just the general structure of the head. And we've done a few streams already where I've talked about the structure of the head. But yes, let's get into it here. So I'm going to use this kind of reference here. I kind of already laid out uh, a rough sketch of the drawing of the head that I wanted to do. But I'll do it again right now so that way you guys can kind of see my process here. So usually whenever I'm drawing a head, I'm always thinking about some of the simplified shapes. But if it's your first time, you know, drawing um, or not your first time, if you're still kind of figuring out how the head works and stuff, uh, one of the best ways you can kind of get into the practice of drawing heads is to just imagine the head as a cube. And then from that cube, start carving out some of the shape of the head. And so what do I mean by that? Um, I mean, if you take this head right here, this head, I'll do it on a new layer here. If you take this head here and you kind of imagine there was a cube there like this, you can kind of see the plane there, of the head, right? And you can kind of fit that, fit this little head here into this cube. And so it's a good little practice that you can do to start imagining, you know, the structure of the head and get comfortable with this volume because I remember when I was younger, I used to draw heads like this. This is this is what I learned from those how to draw um, how to draw manga books, which was draw a circle. And then after you draw that circle, draw a triangle thing face here for the chin. And this was how I learned to draw heads when I was, you know, f when I was first starting out. And this is a good way to kind of get the idea of the shape of the head. But the problem with this is that it doesn't really teach you anything about the actual structure of the head in reality. If anything, it just teaches you how flat the face is, which is not necessarily true because if you want to draw this head in different angles, now you have to figure out, okay, do I got to draw it like this? Or maybe I'll draw like what if you want to draw the head looking down? Do you just draw a smaller triangle? You know what I'm saying? So it's it's a very abstract 
and not necessarily true to what reality is because reality is not flat, right? We're not, we don't have flat 2D faces. We have 3D form with various planes on the face. We've got here a brow ridge. We've got here cheekbones. And so understanding all of those things will not only help make your characters look and feel more solid uh, and also allow you to draw characters from different angles, it'll also help with things like lighting and shading and figuring out how to do that because it's really hard to shade a flat image, right? And so instead, it's, it's a lot easier and more beneficial to learn how to, the 3D forms work. And then we'll talk about stylization after because personally, people think, you know, like, oh, KSM, isn't this too realistic? I, I like to do my cartoony style or my animation, my anime style. But if you think about it, even shows like, let's say The Simpsons is a good example that they always talk about in animation. The Simpsons is a very cartoony style, but even when you see how the animators and the artists draw these characters, they always think of them as 3D forms and 3D volume. Um, it's not just 2D flat images. Even stuff like um, the stuff you see in like uh, Nickelodeons, you know, stuff like that. So... We're going to get into this practice. Uh, I think a big goal of this boot camp for this 30 days is really about helping you guys better get a good grasp uh, of, of understanding form and stuff. So, yeah, there you go. That's uh, <laughs> I know that was a lot. I was a lot of talking there, but I, I, I wanted just to kind of nail home this idea of why I think form is so important, because I think that is actually a really core fundamental that a lot of I don't think a lot of um artists tell you a lot of the times you hear stuff like oh make sure you learn your anatomy right make sure you practice your uh practice your your gestures right how many times have you guys heard that put an f in the chat if you've ever heard somebody say oh yeah you just need to practice your anatomy or you need to practice your gesture and stuff right but they don't tell you how to practice form because people think oh drawing drawing boxes and drawing spheres that's so basic you should understand it but if it was that easy, I think people wouldn't be saying stuff like, oh, yeah, I struggle with perspective, right? Yeah, just practice. Just draw more. My favorite advice is always, oh, you're not you're just not drawing enough. And it's like, OK, but I think we've all I think we've all been in a situation where we feel like we've been drawing a lot, but we feel like it's not going anywhere. Right. Put an F in the chat if that's happening to you. You feel like you're like, Kasem, I've been drawn, man. I draw every, I'm drawn all the time, but I don't feel like I'm doing anything growing. I'm, I'm stuck. What happens there? What happens? And you're just, people are like, just, you just need to draw better. <laughs> you're like, what? Crazy. All right, but let me go ahead and move this head here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this head now. Um, and I'm just going to move it over to the side. And what we're going to do is I'm not actually going to use the reference exactly. What I'm instead going to do is I want to focus primarily on uh, I want to pro focus primarily on talking about the structure of the head here. And we'll just be using this reference to show you guys if you want to follow along. All right. Um, thank you for the follow too, Tyler. Tyler boy, just be better. Yeah. Best advice. Right. So let's talk a little bit about anatomy. I don't want to scare you guys away, so I'm not going to go super crazy here with the anatomy. Actually, do you guys want me to? It is boot camp season. It's the it's the winter quarter of the boot camp. Y'all ask you, look, everyone, look, everyone's like, go crazy, Kasem. Yes, yes. And then five minutes from now, my head hurts. Kasem, I don't know. I don't, what? <laughs> okay, we'll do it. We'll do it for you guys. All right, so let's talk about the anatomy. Um, and primarily here, we're going to focus on the skeletal anatomy because I think that is actually more important than the, than the muscular anatomy. Um, and the main reason why I say this is because the muscular anatomy of the head is actually not, um, it's not that prominent. It's not like you have a gigantic biceps or triceps on your face that really change the structure of your face. If there's any muscle, the majority of muscle that you're going to find on the face is going to be actually from the zygomatic bone, which is the cheekbone, to the uh, portion here of the mandible, which is the jaw. That's where majority of the muscles are that allow you to move, you know, your mouth uh, open and closed. But there's no like, there's no like, you know, triceps or biceps or gigantic muscles there. Um, that are going to be altering the structure of the face too much. And so if anything, um, the main shapes that actually dictate the how the head looks like is going to be the structure of, um, of the skeletal anatomy. What about my JoJo OCs? Okay, fine. Yeah, if you're drawing some JoJo characters, they might have a, they might have a, a you know, 
some some muscle right here some gigantic muscle you know what i'm talking about jojo characters always have these crazy sharp angles looking like greek gods every time the every time you see them but all right let's go let's go back on here and let's talk a little bit about the structure of um the head and all of that stuff so when it comes to drawing out here hold on let me am i in the right layer okay um so when it comes to drawing out the structure of the head here what i'm going to do is i'm going to lay out these general guidelines just to kind of help place where i want things to be um so here is going to be that halfway mark generally for where i want to have the ears placed a little bit um, i know this doesn't look like halfway but again this is like all you know perspective and stuff and then here is that third um so i'm gonna do one half and this is going to be about a third okay um, and this is one half because this is technically right here where that plane of the head remember when we talk about the cube right it's going to be that cube structure so you got to think about it three-dimensionally if you just look at the flat surface yeah from here to here is definitely not one half but if you're talking about it in the volume of this cube right here this right here is one half does that make sense guys let me know in the chat if that doesn't make sense i know it's harder to see so when i say one half you might be like that's not one half ksm um but it's it's one half from the perspective of the head not from this end to this end you got it so it's technically from like this end of the head right here cool 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 yeah i know i know it's weird because you might be like that doesn't make sense one half that doesn't <laughs> you know that doesn't add up what the heck um but let's go ahead here and let's lay out a few more of the structure here of the head so i'm just laying out um some of the anatomy and some of the forms but basically at this stage i'm going to be primarily focusing on just adding in general landmarks of the skull with the first one uh, we're going to talk about being actually this frontal bone here uh, and the frontal bone is basically that forehead bone there that covers the front portion of the um, of the skull and it's a really cool bone because it connects to the zygomatic cheekbone here and if you are um, some some people might actually have a very prominent uh, frontal bone which gives you that brow ridge you know that deep in, that deep set eyes and all that stuff um, so there are some characters that you could draw that have really prominent frontal frontal bones here you know um, but it all depends again you can definitely be flexible with it all right, but let's go in here. And so we have here the zygomatic bone. Um, the zygomatic bone is really cool because it basically connects here um, to, it connects to a couple areas. One, it connects to the frontal bone that we just talked about. It also connects to the uh, maxilla, which is the upper teeth right here of your face. Um, and then it also connects, and not it connects, but it also creates the structure here of the eye socket. So this kind of this this bone right here, I would actually say is probably one of the more important bones to know because it's a, it's a really prominent one um, and one that you'll often see in a lot of um, a lot of people. It's a lot more visible, you know, that that cheekbone. You guys know I'm talking about the Angelina Jolie type of characters with really defined cheekbones or uh, Olivia Munt, 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 whatever her name is. Um, characters that have or, or actors or people that have really defined cheekbones. Um, that's all that zygomatic bone right there. Don't forget the number one step to improving is believing that you can do no wrong. Everything you do is right. Yeah. Victoria Justice cheekbones. Dude, I haven't heard of Victoria Justice in forever. Jason type of cheekbones. Yeah, no, you're right. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> there you go. Now you got, <laughs> why is the filter still on? What the heck? Get this off. Um, maybe the cheekbone is the bicep of the face uh that, you know that's that's technically i i can kind of see that because the cheekbone really does do a lot to uh lift the face there for sure i can see some of that um but let's go in here and let's add that nose here now and again i'm not even using the reference so uh, you guys can use the reference to kind of help you but i'm uh, i'm just kind of laying out here a general kind of structure here for the nose and for the um for the anatomy so let's just place the nose here so normally um if you're going to be working with a skull you're going to have here that nasal bone which just goes in between these two uh and that kind of just inserts into here um but for this one let's actually just draw a real nose maybe we'll kind of do like a hybrid head skull thing um we've got here that zygomatic bone here let's place in that jaw as well basically this again was the portion of the 
this was the portion of the frontal bone right here, right, that we have. Uh, and then going down a little bit here to the backside, interestingly enough, is going to be, so this is kind of that frontal bone, but going back all the way here is actually going to be uh, the parietal bone in the backside there. And then you're going to have the temporal bone on the side right here. And then that occipital bone, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, but these are going to be kind of the main structures. You don't really have to know all of these, to be honest. Um, I would say if there's any, if there's again, any anatomy to really know, it's going to be the, the frontal bone, the zygomatic bone, and then maybe that mandible, which is the, the jaw bone, because those are going to be the ones that really have the largest impact in terms of the structure, um, of the face. Skeletor never looked so good. I know. I, it's funny because I actually had to draw a lot of skeletons um, for work recently. I think like two weeks ago, man, they had me drawing so many skeletons. And so then I was kind of like, you know what? I like this. <laughs> At first I was like, this is too many, too many skeletons. But now I'm like, I like skeletons. They're very, um, they're very interesting. Cause I think if you can draw, if you can draw the skeleton uh, reasonably well, you've basically done half the battle for drawing the face. Also, what happened to my brushes? Um, basically, an undead theme comic for my first project. Yeah, actually, I feel like if you did that, no joke, I feel like you would get really comfortable right away with drawing heads from different angles. Um, but I always tell people, if you're a beginner, you know, you don't have to focus on, um, you don't have to focus on drawing out the, the skull and all of that stuff. I think starting off again with like this, even even just getting comfortable with um, even getting comfortable with just drawing out these these volume of the head and moving away from that anime how to draw anime flat version that that very flat circle and triangle uh, jaw strategy I think will really help you on the long run because I think there's a lot of limitations with a strategy like that unfortunately. Um, definitely try for a PS5 if you can. God of War on it is amazing. I know, I know. I have a gaming PC. I actually have a pretty decent PC, but I don't know. I like, I like the feel of, of playing on a console. I think maybe it's just like nostalgia and stuff. I'm a, I'm a basic person. Okay. Like I play, I play shooter games on with a, with a, with a, with a console. <laughs> But all right, so let's talk about the head here. So we drew out the head here. And again, this is just a rough, a rough structure of the head. This is, this doesn't have to be like an exact match, but I just wanted to show you guys here from the structure of the head that we have, which I know looks kind of grimy um, and gross, but that's just because it's a skull. Um, but from this structure here that we do, that we did lay out. Okay. Uh, what I want to do is let's talk a little bit about the insertion here of the the neck so what's really cool about the neck is the neck basically inserts into this base right here of the um of the skull and it goes through this kind of like occipital bone which kind of looks like a like um i don't know if i want to talk about occipital bones maybe i do um but it basically is kind of like an, uh, like a shovel, like a horseshoe kind of thing that goes in the back of the skull here. And there's a hole there for where the spine goes. And so if you're trying to figure out what that means or where that is, um, this is again where that spine is, right? So the spine kind of inserts right there. What that means is that when you're drawing the head out like this, notice how the, sp the, the spine is going to go kind of like right here, a little bit past the jaw. And then that distance from here to here is roughly going to be about the same. So if you know this, all you got to do is figure out, okay, where is that? Where is the base there of the skull right here, right? So the base of the skull is going to be right here. Let me find that halfway mark there and let me go place that in. So you can kind of do that here as well, right? So let's go ahead and draw this head real quick. Where's the base of the skull? Probably like right here. Where's that neck going to be right here in the back. And then you're going to find that volume from here to here. Now, again, there's going to be some wrapping of forms and stuff, but Understanding some of these, I think, will help kind of uh, demystify a little bit of what's happening there with the um, with the structure of the head. So there you go. And this is something that I that I actually learned from from uh, from Tom Fox. So shout out to Tom for for doing these demos and stuff. Okay, so let's go in there. I'm uh, 
move this in here and then let's take I'm gonna do this new layer here and we'll talk a little bit about the volume of the neck neck volume of the neck next as I so hard to say um, and so when you actually go in here and and kind of insert this in so I'm gonna do that right now okay this is gonna be that spine let's kind of just take this go bloop like that okay so we just we just literally just put the put the spine there the next step here really is just going to be adding in volume um, underneath because everything kind of wraps around this structure of the head there volume of the neck neck yeah volume of the neck next <laughs> and again um i know this this might sound like a lot of complicated stuff so i want you guys to know that uh, you know if if you're having a hard time understanding a lot of these things it's okay. It's, these are very technical things that we're talking about right now. Um, and let me just, let me just label a few things here for those of you who are trying to take notes. Um, but from here, it's going to be hopefully not too crazy. I'm going to just, I'm just going to fill out the neck with some general forms, right? So remember that there's going to be some muscles that basically line up underneath the, the jaw here, right? So the jaw is going to basically take up kind of this form right here and as the muscle wraps around the base of the neck here like so keep in mind that the neck is actually going to go in and and kind of taper towards the base here of um of the of the shoulder and all of that stuff so you can kind of imagine what's going on right now is we're going to take all this lower the opacity a little bit and then we'll draw the blue layer on top so that way you can kind of still see the underlying structure okay but let's go in here and again let's start thinking about some of the the forms the volume and this is where again starting to see these structures i think will really help you out because once you start to visualize these things not as just random lines on a page but actually thinking about the volume and the forms um, you'll start to see it a little bit more clearly to the point where you know it stops becoming more scary i don't know sometimes it's still scary i think art art is scary in general there are times where art is really fun and there are times where it's just like yo what the heck is going on but i think the more you learn about these things and the more you practice these things i think the better off it'll you'll end up being when it comes to actually applying these things to your own illustration yeah so there's a lot of muscles that go on here um i'm not i haven't talked about them yet because i don't want to overwhelm you guys but um but this is just like a generalization of the, the of the tapering there of the neck okay so remember i'm just trying to highlight things for you guys um so that way you guys can start thinking about these things yourself but you know you don't have to remember all the names and stuff right now just kind of the general idea yeah um we have here i think we did this one on thursday but i talked a little bit about the the actual anatomy of the neck um, from the trapezius on the back side there, the sternocleidomastoid on the on the side right here where that connects from the back of the skull to the clavicle. And then we have here the trachea, which also has the hyoid bone and the intrinsic muscles underneath. So we did cover all these things last week. Um, and that's part of the reason why I'm not covering it as much today. Um, I'm not trying to I'm today. I want to just give you guys the details that I think you need to know. Um, but for those of you overachievers who really want to know everything, um, I do have those resources as well. Um, so yeah, so the info on the mandible, I think the biggest thing again about the mandible is just remembering that there, this bone right here, um, that yeah, last year I'll do a diagram right now. So kind of show you the, uh, what I mean, but what, what I'm trying to say here is that when you draw a head and again this is you know even even if you're talking about stylized stylization and all that stuff but when you draw a head what you want to do is you want to make sure let me take this let me take all this one right here um you want to make sure that you're adding in a little bit of volume underneath the jaw as opposed to just maybe adding in like a flat space so i'll show you what that what, what i mean by that in a second let me just clear this all up here so i think it's very important to have um, a little bit of volume underneath the jaw um, so especially kind of like this region right here you know as you uh as you draw out your characters and stuff let me just make it a little bit thinner 
Because if you do, like, I would say if you don't do this, and sometimes what I see a lot of beginners, um, a lot of uh, what a lot of beginners might struggle with is sometimes you might go in and kind of just make it look a little bit flat. So instead, what I see is this, and I used to do this all the time too, um, where I would draw the neck and I'm just trying to make room here <laughs> where I would draw the neck and I would just draw it like this right like don't do this because if you do this what ends up happening is you're losing a lot of that actual volume that's there and I don't think that's going to be accurate it's going to look a little funky when you lose out on all the actual muscle that exists and then it makes it harder to draw a head because sometimes what I'll see is people do this right well they'll go in here and they'll just draw they'll kind of like just draw this flat form here like that And so you lose out on that underlying volume. So you want to make sure you capture some of that volume and, and it doesn't have to be a lot, right? Like you can definitely taper this one out to make it look, maybe the character is a little bit more leaner or maybe they're more muscular. So you might have a thicker neck or a thinner neck. Um, but just don't forget that there is something there that helps uh, give it some volume, right? Cause this right here, I mean, again, there's, there's a lot of anime style, but even in the anime style, they still consider it, even if it's more subtle, um, it's, you know, you want to make sure you give a little bit of that that volume there so so again you don't have to do a lot of volume uh, but having even a little bit shows and makes it a little bit easier to understand um, what's going on when you try to draw a character especially at an angle like this right so the part of the reason why um, I'm doing it at this angle today is to kind of show you guys uh to show you guys how the jaw works because if you're drawing a character like let's say looking down or even looking like this you're not really going to see as much of that volume there so it's not going to be as big of a you know as big of a deal but by having an understanding of how all of this stuff works i think it'll better inform you overall so Uh, yeah, unless there's some light maybe that's there that'll kind of highlight it a little bit more, right? So yeah, there's definitely gonna be some cases, but I'm maybe like I'm kind of generalizing here, but cool. Um, so that was the first little demo there. If you guys are watching from YouTube and you haven't yet subscribed, uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And uh, thanks again for hanging out here. But okay, how are you guys feeling? You guys okay? You guys good? Because if so, we can go in here and talk about the next thing, which is gonna be um i'll give you guys a quick demo on maybe like the hyoid bone and stuff all right so let's go do this head here which i actually funny enough i already drew this picture a while back um i think last year and i think there's already a lot of things i would change from the drawing but um i just i'll just keep it here as a reference to show you guys but what i want to do is i want to redraw i want to kind of draw this from a more extreme angle and so you guys can kind of get an understanding a little bit about the the jaw and the hyoid bone that we talked about um that we talked about earlier so i think part of the interesting thing when it comes to drawing the head and today as you can see i'm really pushing a lot of these uh perspective of these angles so if you guys are having a hard time with this that's good it's it's good practice to start drawing the head. And I feel like this is where really that, that flat anime technique starts to lose its uh, credibility. Because if you're only, if you only were taught to draw like, okay, draw a circle, uh, put a little bit of line and do this and do that, which is how I, how I learned it when I was first learning how to draw, I was like how to draw manga, right? This like flat technique. The problem with this is when you start getting into crazier perspectives of your character design and moving your head around in, in angles, this flat technique, this 2D flat technique really loses, um, it, it loses out on that and you, you can't really do it as well. So at that point, you just might as well learn how to do the three dimensional forms um, of these structures. So I'll, I'll do a demo right now where we talk about this structure of the head here. Uh, what do you suggest to place the ear easily at this perspective? Oh, to place the ear, um, I would say find this cross section, right? So the halfway mark of the head right here, um, find here where you want that brow ridge to be, which is going to be right here, usually a third of the way from this, this top portion, boom, boom, and then boom right here. So it's a little bit lower. Uh, and then you just kind of go in here 
lay out the ear. Remember that there's going to be some overlaps um, like that. So again, you're, you're thinking about overlap and form. This is a hard angle. Honestly, I, will, I, I feel like most characters, you're not going to be seeing this design. This is a crazy design. If you're drawing your heads like this all the time, dude, props to you. Cause I think this is a hard angle to draw regularly. Um, but I would put the ear there actually. Um, again, this is all just placements, right? So after generalizing the placement and stuff, you can get some really interesting dynamic, uh, dynamic shapes there. But that's if I wanted to add an ear. I just I just didn't think about adding one because I didn't think it was important. Well, we have it now, so <laughs> let's just let's just keep it. I guess let's just keep that ear there. Why not? You missed the bank account part. I'm sorry. You, you might have to watch the vods for that. Um, I don't know what I'm missing, so it's good to go over the basics to see where I'm actually lacking expressions or something I'm working really hard to improve. So this is a great place to start. Oh yeah, I mean if you guys want expressions, um, the first three weeks of January I think that we started streaming was purely expressions. We only did we only did character expressions. We had these here, and then I did um, I did these for Ellie on Saturday. Actually, we we worked on some expressions for Ellie. I haven't even posted this one on Instagram yet. I, I need to, I need to clean it up a little bit, uh, a little bit more, but yeah, we, we did all of that. So we did a lot of expressions, but right now we're focusing on more of the technical stuff. It's more or less at the cross section of the jaw and the cheekbone. Mm, yeah, I think so. You can think of it that way. If you're thinking about it from a skeletal point of view. Um, and I can already tell I'll binge your videos after stream ended already. You've got a way of making entertaining education. God, thank you. Thank you, Zurikane. I try. Great name, by the way. Wait, is it is it Zurikane or just Z Hurricane? I realized I don't know why I'm saying it like that. Zurikane. Um somebody needs to rewatch it a couple times, but it's better to redraw it a couple times by yourself to remember. Yeah, and that's a big part of why um that's a big part of why I'm what's it called? Um I'm up I want to upload these to YouTube is because I realize like for me doing like a 30 day challenge might take somebody three months, right? To do, or maybe someone here might be like, Oh, you know what? I don't need a lot of the stuff here. I only need a few things. And it might only take you a few days. And so I think having that option for you guys to be able to watch the YouTube videos at your own time, at your own pace, and then also leave comments on YouTube too, because that was the big thing that it, like originally I was thinking like, I'll just keep it on Twitch because it's Twitch VODs, you know? What's the whole point of uploading something to YouTube um, again if I already have the Twitch VODs? But I realized that because it's on YouTube, it's actually a lot easier for you guys to leave comments, leave questions um, on the videos, whereas on Twitch, you can't really do that. Um, and so that is part of the reason why I decided to start uploading more onto YouTube now, just so that you guys can have that option. If you want to ask me any questions, if you're like, hey, I, 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 I would love to hear more of this topic, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but it also helps, I think, people come in for the first time. Also, if they're new, right? If you're new to this, if you, if you haven't, didn't know I stream on Twitch and you found me on YouTube first, I think that's really cool too. Because then people will be like, yo, I actually found you through YouTube um, and I enjoyed your, <laughs> your VODs. I'm like, okay. Um, but okay, so what I wanted to do here is I wanted to talk about two major bones about the neck since we're in the topic of drawing necks here. Um, so let me highlight the two that I want to talk about. So the first one here is going to be the mandible, my one of my favorite bones here of the neck. If you guys are fans of Giga Chads, you guys know about the, uh, the, the mandible here, the jaw bone. Okay, so that's going to be this one right here. And I'm just going to highlight this one for you guys. Um, so you guys can see it a little bit better. Okay. So here's that mandible there. And the reason why I'm highlighting it in the first place is because I want to go over the other bone too, which is called the hyoid bone. And so there's another bone here. Interestingly enough, you can kind of see it on this guy, uh, this kind of area right here, but there's this bone that basically is used to protect the throat. Um, it's, it's, um, kind of helps with the trachea and all of that stuff. But these two bones right here are actually pretty OP because if you know these two bones, this is basically how you draw the, um, the head from this angle. Okay. 
Yeah, feel, feel your own throat. You feel your jaw and you can kind of feel it there. Um, but the reason why this is important is because when you have this neck structure here, um, and if you try to simplify it for what it is, I'm going to duplicate it on the side here like this. This is really, if you want to just simplify it to its kind of primitive forms and stuff, this is really just going to be, um, you can think of it as a, a set of planes here. Let me do a new layer. One, so you got one, two, three, one, two, three, like that. And I'm telling you, like some of these things are going to be such minor details, but you never know. You never know when you want to draw ahead from this angle. And now that you know it, it'll, it'll be less confusing. You get what I'm saying? Um, so this is going to be that simplified structure that we're talking about for the neck. Uh, this is again going to be just some general shapes that you can kind of start thinking about the structure of the neck. And then, um, from here I'll do it in a, I'll do like in a yellow ish color, like a mustardy color. Let me find it real quick or orange color kind of looks cool. Uh, and then from here, this is where you can start to insert the structures, right? So you can kind of go like this and start imagining. Now you can kind of see what I'm doing, right? Imagining those planes connecting to the neck. And then there you go. That's it. That's how you, um, that's how you draw this underside here, the neck to start establishing some of the volume, some of the, that structure there underneath. So this is what I would recommend if you guys are really trying to get a grasp and maybe you're struggling at drawing heads from this angle, maybe something like this, you know, and I did an extreme case, right? I did an extreme angle. So obviously this is going to be a little, a little crazy. I, okay. So right now all I'm doing is I'm breaking up the head here. Uh, why you might ask, because I want to go over the interior here of the neck. We're just going over. So today's, so for those of you guys, if you didn't know, um, today's focus is going to be heavily on the general structure of the head and the neck, but also how to connect these two things. I think that's going to be my primary focus for today's stream is really talking about how you can piece these two things together because I'm sure some of you guys have, um, some of you guys might have struggled at some point, right? With like figuring out how the head and the neck work together. Like maybe you've drawn a really cool, uh, you've drawn a really cool character design for your face. And the moment you try to put the neck on, you're kind of like, damn, what the heck? What's going on here, right? How many of you guys have ever been there? Put an F in the chat if you've ever struggled with with drawing the neck on your characters, right? It, it happens. It happens a lot, surprisingly. And so I think this is a good kind of time to just talk about the the, the general structure of these things. Um, do you have a number one exercise for learning to draw portraits? Um, I would say a really, really good exercise for drawing portraits and getting better at drawing portraits is to actually take the take the portrait you're drawing. Let's say this guy right here and do a quick draw over. This is again, not tracing. We're not trying to trace here, but I want you to kind of grasp where the, the simplified forms are, right? So this is a good exercise I used to do all the time is try to find where the, where the, the simple kind of forms are, look at some of the general shapes, where are the proportions going to be? And don't focus too much on trying to capture all the details and all the bumps. So I'm not, I'm not trying to capture the brow ridge here and the dip and the cheekbone, not yet, at least, um, just kind of focusing on some of that finding the, 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 the chin there going down this way for the side plane. Right. And so I'm trying to look for where these planes are. And then from there, what I like to do is, you know, just try to understand the, the, the proportions that I'm seeing here. So here we have where the brows are going to be, where we have the eye, the nose are going to be, uh, the, the eyelids, eyes, all of that stuff. And then from there, I'll just put a little two dots there, you know, move it to the side. So let's maybe finish off with this ear like this. Okay. But after all of this, move it to the side and be like, okay, cool. So this is the general structure of this head. Let me see if I can now redraw it again, but without, you know, without having to trace or whatever. So this is kind of what I do sometimes before, you know, if I really wanted to practice getting the likeness of something or getting the, uh, general proportions is just build a mask. So this is kind of what this is called. Um, 
uh, in like animation and whatnot is uh, you're, you're building a mask. We're not, this is not a tracing because as you can see, we're not really trying to copy every single detail we see, right? We're just seeing what the core components are. And then later I'll actually show you guys, we'll do some drawing here where, where I will draw the head and stuff. And that's where you can stylize it to whatever you want. You can make it look like, you know, the characters. But I would say these are good practices that I would recommend. Um, just to kind of get yourself started, especially if you are a beginner and you're still struggling with drawing the face and figuring out how the structure of the face should work. Okay. Um, but yeah, let me know if that was helpful. If that was um, something that <laughs> you can maybe utilize for your own stuff. This is what I, this is what I would do uh, personally. I'll actually keep it here just so that we have it as a reference. Um, but going back to the exploded neck here, this one I think was the exploded neck, right? I think so. <laughs> yeah, exploded neck. Um, it's a bit off topic or not, but how do you keep consistency on the face while drawing expressions and such? Do you have um, rules or reminders, maybe notes you take about the details or specific face? Oh, that's actually a really great question because we did a draw. Um, I deleted it. I'm so sorry. I, I deleted the drawing that we did, but I should have kept it. Honestly, I don't know why I deleted it. But um, last stream on Saturday, I did a draw. I did some draw overs that you guys submitted because you guys wanted me to critique your art. And so I drew over some some of the art. One of them was actually asking that question exactly about keeping expressions. And so I showed you guys how to do that, like at least in animation, how we you know keep the structure of the face consistent and all of that stuff. Uh, a lot of it really comes down to understanding the general details of your character. So I'll show you really quick. Um, So this is something that's pretty common that you'll do in animation is let's say if you're designing a character and you want to pass this along to animators, storyboard artists, uh, revisionists, char other character designers or whatever, um, making a character model sheet like this where you really break down um, the details of the character, everything from proportions to subtle details like how how many different strands of hair are there. Um, things like this where like, hey, which lines are parallel to what, right? So we have here the line of the hairline matches uh, and is in parallel to the brows. It's also parallel to the nose and the lips. Or here how the hairline actually lines up with the brows and the eyes. So details like this are going to be really helpful in terms of establishing likeness uh, for your characters especially for everyone else who also keeps drawing um, drawing these characters too, right? So doing something like this is going to be really good, even if it's for your own characters, because let's be honest here, guys, put an F in the chat. If you've ever tried to draw an original character, right? And then the second or third or fourth time you drew this character, they didn't look like the first time you drew them. Put an F in the chat. Let me see. You know what I'm talking about. You draw a character again and you're like, hmm, you know what? This might actually be a new OC. This is the OC's brother that is later. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is not the same one. This is a different one. Or it's like, actually, this is this is my new version of the OC, right? People keep making new versions of their OC. <laughs> they keep drawing new characters. You're like, okay, is it really a new character? Or are you just struggling to draw the character you drew the first time? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, it's just a it's just a big family. But yeah, no, I, I totally get it. I think I think drawing likeness and getting likeness for your characters is hard in general. Um it's it's not something that's easy to do and definitely takes a lot of practice. So even even in the industry, um getting likeness of characters and, and making them look the same is something that you have to really develop over time. Um I've done stuff for work all the time where I drew characters that I thought looked good. And then I looked back at the scenes that I did like, man, I remember the first week of work, I did some, I did some drawings for some characters and then I looked back at it and I was like, yo, this is trash. How did my supervisor approve this? <laughs> How did, why did she say this is good? <laughs> and I'm like, I was like, hmm, can I, can I fix this? Can I make it look better? But it's, um, it's a process, you know, and it's, it's not something that's easy. Um, I think you definitely have to, you keep working on it, but 
as you, you know, like with any skill, you, you, you continue to, to develop that, that skill. And over time, um, over time, it, it, it does become a little bit easier and, or you start picking up tips and tricks that can make it easier to, to learn how to, uh, break down the style or structure of something. Right. But yeah, um, this is going to be, I would say the general structure here that we have for this neck. Um, I wanted to break it out for you guys just to kind of show you, it might look a little crazy to show you the excessiveness here of drawing a neck. I'm, I'll lower it a bit more so we get more proportions. All right. Uh, I find it's hard to draw for imagination, trying to get better. Oh, you guys want a good exercise for that? How many of you guys in the chat struggle with drawing from imagination and or from invention? I had a teacher um, from, from uh, what's it called? from concept design academy who said it's more accurate it's more accurate to say drawing from invention because what you're doing is you're using your imagination which is stored visual library to create and invent something new so it's not necessarily like you're coming up with something completely new it's more like um uh you're inventing things but how do you do that right so um, here's a good exercise that I would actually recommend for those of you who might be struggling with that. And this is something I do, uh, I try to do on a daily basis, but what I'll do is, um, is it this one? Um, so what I do is I give myself 10 minutes, right? And I say in 10 minutes, I'm just going to draw a character from invention, right? And I'll do this. And sometimes the, some, some days are good. Some days are bad. You know, and that's completely fine. I don't actually post these on Instagram or anywhere, but these are just 10 minute faces and stuff that I draw from invention. And then I go back in and I try to critique myself. I'll, I might say stuff like, huh, hey, you know, I didn't really like how I drew the hair here. This is a little ambiguous there. Uh, forehead's a little big here, that kind of thing, you know? And so these are things that I do on a regular basis. And I give myself just a 10 minute you know, 10 minute exercise to draw from invention. And even if it's good or bad, that's not necessarily the goal. The goal here is just getting accustomed to that practice of drawing um, and coming up with different ideas and then also uh, critiquing yourself so that you can work on something, uh, work, work on something for the next time. Right. So that's what I would recommend. I think it's a fun exercise. It only takes about 10 minutes of your day. And again, it's not about it looking good. I, I don't, I don't post these things and I don't generally, I'm not even supposed to show it to you guys. Like part of my rule is to never show it to anybody, but I think I'm not, you know, I'm just showing it to you guys as an example. So I think it's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll let that, I'll let that slide, I guess. Uh, you can rewrite your own code every, um, every year you see old mistakes and correct them. I know. And that's how engineers continue to have jobs. We, we, um, we write the bugs and problems that we later solve and fix. <laughs> welcome to, welcome to software engineering, baby. I have a hard time drawing reality than inventing new things, but this info is still helpful. Yeah. Let me see. You have aphantasia. So you know, what's interesting, uh, Spike Mayor, I used to think I had aphantasia too. And then I realized that there was a way to train. There was a way to train your mind to, um, to slowly work work around your aphantasia so I'll, I'll explain that in a bit give me a sec i just want to do this but um so one of the things that i did one of the exercises that i did was i would in my mind just think like okay i know i can't visualize anything because i i had aphantasia too so i said okay let me just imagine myself drawing a line right if i close my eyes and i just imagine myself i drew a line okay I can do that. I can draw a line. And then you start working your way. I'd be like, okay, let me draw, let me draw a triangle. Can I imagine myself drawing a triangle? A little bit. It's a little fuzzy, right? But you start doing stuff like that. And then eventually over time, you start getting a little bit more and more clarity with what you can visualize. Um, but that's how I do it. You know, that's how I deal with my aphantasia is by working on restructuring things instead of just trying to tell myself, hey, let me picture what an apple looks like. Because if you try to do that, sometimes it's really hard to visualize an apple in your head and you're like, I can't see it. I know what an apple should look like, but in my mind, it's just, it's just blank. It's like a black screen, right? So I would say to give that a try, see if that works out for you. Um, I think that worked out for me and really helped me 
um, train train my visual library in, in my mind and stuff. Um, uh, I can visualize when I was so good at fine detail. So I usually use references for those. Like I'll visualize a scene and then use references. Yeah. And that's great. I think that's a good blend, right? Like kind of combining, uh, combining your own visual library and ideas with, with references is a pretty common practice. Um, I would say in the industry. Um, I have a, an art question, but it's only a little related to what you're doing. No worries. As a self-taught artist, do you ever get assignments at work that you don't know how to do and how do you approach them? Um, oh yeah, <laughs> all the time. Um, sometimes I'll get asked to work on a scene and I'm just like, yo, what the heck am I supposed to do there? Um, thankfully I have really good coworkers and my, and my lead is super nice. And so if there's ever anything that I'm just kind of like, Hey, I don't really know how I should be tackling this. Here are some ideas that I have. Um, I would say good coworkers are, are really good at hopefully giving you some guidance. I know that that's not true for every workplace and that's unfortunate. Um, but thankfully I'm in a position right now where, um, where I get, uh, where I get the help when I need it kind of thing. So, yeah. Uh, but I think a big part of what I like to do whenever I do ask for help is I like to I like to at least try it myself first and just let people know like, hey, I have tried. I've tried doing something and I just don't know how to do it. This is what I've tried. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think sometimes people just kind of ask and say like, hey, tell me what to do. Um, and so that I don't think is as helpful. So definitely, you know, if you are going to ask for help and stuff, um, make sure you show a little bit of the effort first. Will I be ever covering uh, facial features on this boot camp? Yeah, so we'll we'll probably talk about stuff like the nose and we'll talk about the mouth and and that stuff. Sh we should be. We should be talking about it. I probably won't spend a super long time on it, but we will definitely um we will definitely address some of that there. Okay. But I think we're good here. I think we've done a lot. I exploded. I exploded the head of this guy here. Um, and let me just move it up a little bit. Okay. Let's go in now and let's talk about this one right here. And I guess we'll just draw this face. And I, I think we'll use this one as a, as a demo of just kind of like all the things we've covered. Let's actually apply that now into drawing this guy's uh, drawing this guy over here. Okay. That advice applies a lot to jobs. People want a worker who's independent, but ask for help when they can't move forward. Oh yeah, hundred percent. And thankfully that's something that I learned from being a software engineer. So even though I'm relatively new to the animation industry, I, I, you know, I worked as a software engineer for five years. And so I know how to work with people at least. I know, I know hopefully how to ask help in the ways that I think makes sense. So, um, because of that, I think it's, it helps me out now. So I've gained some experience because of that. All right. So let me go ahead and draw this head. So we'll take a little bit of a breather here from talking about all the technical things. And we'll just kind of do like a, a rough kind of quick demo of how I draw heads. Um, and I'm doing some rough lines here. So again, I don't always draw out like a box or a cube. I think if I ever do draw cubes for my heads, it's usually because I'm doing a scene that is very perspective heavy. So an example of that would be like this one here that I've shown you guys before. I don't know why the opacity is so low, but um, where I've done scenes like this, where I'm mapping out the positioning of things and I want to make sure the perspective is good. In this case, I would usually use a cube to kind of just figure out the placement of the head and the volume. Uh, and then I work out the details as I, you know, after I clean up the, all the stuff there. Um, but if I'm just doing general portraits and whatnot, I'm not always drawing cubes and you guys don't have to do that either. You know, I always say, find the, uh, find the approach that feels the most comfortable to you. Right. And I think that's kind of the beauty of art is that there's no right or wrong way technically to do something. I think as long as the, the, you're satisfied with the process and the result, you know, that's, that's all that matters. All right, so I'm just going to go in here. Uh, again, I'm just laying out the anatomy, not even the anatomy, just simple structures uh, when I'm drawing these faces and stuff. And again, I'm laying out just general proportions and placements just because it's easier, I think, for me to kind of map these things out. 
Uh, and then, you know, from there, we can kind of go in with the details if you want to. Um, and then I like to kind of find like, you know, relationships with the face. So here's like that Illuminati triangle technique using the ends of the brows there along with the ends of the nose. And by using this technique, it actually gives you a good idea of where to place the end of the eyes. So like right here is where I want the eye to be. Uh, we're going to go a little bit about halfway there. End of the nose is going to be kind of like right there. So we're going to kind of go in, boom, boom, boom. And that's just going to be, again, that general structure um, that we can use for, for perspective and not perspective, for proportion and whatnot. Um, but yeah, right now I'm just, I'm just laying out some of the details for this guy's face. Uh, this is a very rough sketch. Obviously we're not going to probably do a clean line art like what we did here. Um, like we did here, uh, with, with Joel from last of us. Cause that was like a full on piece. Like today is more of like a study, you know? So I, I'm, I'm, I'd rather focus on the parts of the study that I care about, which in this case is going to be primarily the, um, I think we're primarily going to focus on the neck today. Um, but for those of you who are mostly here for, um, for the drawing and stuff right now, um, just to kind of walk you through what I'm doing, I'm just showing you real quick my placement of the neck because I want to show you a comp some common mistakes that I see uh, beginners make. So I'm, what I'm doing is something called drawing through the form uh, right now where I'm actually just drawing kind of behind the structure here of the head and placing that structure of the neck here, okay? So that's kind of uh, that's kind of what you're seeing right now. If you're kind of like, what the heck is he doing? Um, I'm just placing in here the volume and all that stuff as if we could see what's going on with the neck. Okay. Hopefully that makes makes some sense. All right, so let's talk about the neck and some common mistakes I see uh, with the neck and stuff and stuff that I hopefully um, can call out with you guys here. So that way you don't make these mistakes that I oftentimes see artists making. Okay. Um, so a common mistake that I see with the neck is actually, let me kind of go in here. Um, burr, 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 burr. So sometimes the mistake that I see is when artists do, I think when you start lacking the volume in the neck, it can start to really show. So let me actually group this up and we'll duplicate it a few times. Um, so a common mistake sometimes is if you're drawing the neck and maybe the neck here, you lose out on some of the volume, some of the stuff that we talked about, right? So remember that the neck here, again, this portion of the spine connects to the back there of the skull. So that's the occipital bone that it squeezes through there. And so if you are drawing ahead and you're kind of lacking in that structure, Sometimes what I see is, you know, artists will kind of go in and they'll, they'll put the, they'll put the neck in here. Um, and then they'll kind of lose out on all that volume there. And then you have kind of like this very thin neck, right? So you don't want to have this kind of thin neck here because what ends up happening is again, you're, you're missing out on a lot of the chunk there and a lot of that surface area, um, not surface area, the, the volume of the neck here. So you always want to make sure you're capturing the full roundness of something. So this is like, uh, this is one of those don't do this. So here, I'm going to call it out and I'm going to say um, this. You don't want to do any of this because what ends up happening here is you're losing out. So what this does is you get like an elongated neck, right? So you get like um, two elongated, elongated, gated, gated. Um, and then also you lose out again on that volume here. You're missing out on that volume, which I think is so important. Volume. Again, the whole point of today's stream is really about understanding volume and getting comfortable with understanding how to draw through your forms um, and really visualizing everything that you're seeing. Um, and hey, bottle episode, welcome in. But I think, I think that's mostly it for, um, for, for these demos. I might draw some more just to kind of clean it up a little bit.